Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. I feel really honored and privileged to have my guest on the program today. He's been described as the most knowledgeable tactician in football. He led Nigeria to the World Cup, the first time a Nigerian ever led the national football team to World Cup competition. Let's sit back and spend some time learning football from the man who knows it all. Festus Adeboe, now known as Chief Adebo Nibinde, is a retired Nigerian football coach and technical advisor who saw the Super Eagles through several tournaments, including the FIFA World Cup. Born on the 5th of March, 1938 in Modakeke, he did not start his primary education until 1948, when he was 10 years old. Aside grooming his skills in school, where he represented his class in inter-class football matches, his first venture into sports was during his time at the teacher's training college, where he joined the school team and took part in sports and athletics. It was during this period he attended his first coaching course at the Liberty Stadium Ibadan in 1961. At that time, he was a captain of his team and already coaching. After successfully coaching the Water Corporation team of Ibadan, Onibinde was later assigned the coach of the Industrial Investment and Credit Corporation, IICC Shooting Stars Sports Club of Ibadan. He took the club to the finals at the African Club Champions Cup. Also, he led the Nigerian team to the finals of the African Nations Cup in 1984. Odibindi became the official coach of the Nigerian national team after the sack of the coaching crew, at the time led by Shoaibo Amodu, following what was considered a disgraceful performance of the Super Eagles at the 2002 African Cup of Nations. This highly respected Nigerian soccer tactician, who is now 81 years, has served as football manager and a technical instructor for the Confederation of African Football and FIFA. Other than sports, he also ventured into acting at the University of Ife, featuring in stage plays directed by both Olaro Tibi and Wole Inka. In his leisure, Chief Onibinde enjoys playing the talking drum and relaxing with family. Am I right to think you are? A lot of people describe you as a football academician or an academic who, you know, knows football in theory. As far as I'm concerned, and from the records available, you have something probably similar to the Portuguese coach, Jose Mourinho. He had never played football, was never known to have played football. He was never very played big time football. Yes, the same as you. Uh -huh. Right. Has, but it will be wrong for people to say I never played football. I told you, I captained the, the teams of all my teacher training colleges and divisional teams. Uh, St. Peter's College, Elisha, for my grade three. Uh, St. Luke's College, Ibadan, for my grade two. And Rural Education College, Akure, for my teacher's grade one. So I played football. Tell me the story about your encounter with uh, uh, Tonda Balogo, Taslim, you know, Balogo, uh, you know, and how he became your coach and how... Well, he, um, <laughs> each time I think about him, I become emotional. Because I saw him and I still regard him as probably the best footballer Nigeria has ever produced. Where did your football career pick up from? Well, when I was in the primary school, I was not in the primary school team. <clears throat> Although I got selected into the primary school team, but I had no time because of the uh, family situation. After school, I had to go to the farm or go at drumming. So there was no time for me to attend after school trainings. So I didn't play my uh, primary school uh, team. But after leaving the primary school, I taught for one year and then went for my teacher's grade three. Coincidentally, we were pioneering students. 
the college had just been established, and we were only 29 in the class, and we had to raise a team. That was where I really got into football. And for 20 years or more, you were the first Nigerian CAF and FIFA instructor, technical advisor. What was your role like, you know, at the time? By the time I got into the services of the Western State Sports Council in 1974, the competition was highly competitive. But at the interview, I, I emerged as the best. And I was appointed and I started rising from there. Then in 1976, the Sports Council sent two of us to Germany for German A license course in Hennef. Uh, two months of attachment to clubs. In February, we were attached with the uh, Hatta BSC of Berlin. In March, we attended the A license. In April, we were uh, attached with the uh, MSV Duisburg. So it was a three month uh, sort of organization. When, when we came back, I was posted in Oyo, the zonal office in Oyo, to develop football in that area. We had about six zones there. I was in that Oyo when I came on leave. I came to Ibadan on leave. And they were looking for me with a letter from the Sports Council that I had been assigned to handle water corporation. Of the Badon. They were the closest rivals to IICC then. And that was the team that really brought me into limelight. That's the team there, that photograph. And um, I was on that. We matched second in the National League, second to shooting stars. A lot of things happened. Eventually, in 1978, I was uh, withdrawn from water. They claimed there was a misunderstanding between me and water. I was withdrawn. And the following week, I was assigned to shooting stars. How would you assess that in a period? Did you achieve much with the de football development in the Western Actually, region at the time? Actually, I, I said it. That was what brought me up as a known coach. My assignment with a uh, Water Corporation. And after about two years, I was moved from water to shooting stars. How did you see football development in Africa generally? Being a CAF technical advisor instructor, did you see football in Africa as the developing? Did you make any contribution towards the development? We are still joking and with what? football in Africa, and particularly in Nigeria. We have not faced the, real, the core of the assignment. Uh, let, let me say this. As a CAF instructor and FIFA instructor, I must have conducted courses in not less than 40 countries in Africa. The whole of West Africa, North Africa, East Africa. So what were your findings? We, we couldn't find a model of football for Africa. Yes, you know, the Spanish found one, the Germans, you know, the Dutch, now, that is mainly the French. Because, that is mainly because you don't have a developmental program. Well, that was supposed to be your responsibility. Yes, but I played my role, but I couldn't have done it alone. For instance, I said I was posted in Oyo for a few months. I was coaching three times a day before school time in the morning at lunch break. Then I, after school hours, I was moving from school to school. And that is supposed to be the root of the whole thing. Kajem Young, they say. And um, with my tour of Africa and some other part of the world, I have not seen a country that is, is as endowed in football talent as Nigeria. But first of all, we are not identifying the talents. Not to talk of polishing them into stars. There was a time, I think it was in 1994, yes. Nigeria was ranked number five or number four in the world. What happened? Yes. Now you're talking about 41 position, 42, 43. Yes. How could you have dropped so drastically? That is the reason. We have not developed football. We are not developed. You see, in those, the, 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 the British 
influence was still with us. You know, this earlier time you are talking about. The British influence was still on us. Especially in school. We used to have annually secondary school football competition. Where are they today? At national level. Even primary schools used to have competitions. Where are they today? Go to some of our big secondary schools today, they don't have a playground. So it's the infrastructure. Well, infrastructure is not there because we don't, we have not created the program that we make it necessary for us to, to, to acquire. What about coaching? It, it took a foreigner. It's the same thing. It took a, a foreigner to it take Nigeria the to the thing. World Cup for the first time. It, it is the same thing. If you want to improve the standard of education in any country, your first port of call is development of good quality teachers. You want to improve the standard of sports, you must have good quality coaches. And that is what I'm saying. What program do we have for the training of our coaches? I have been to several dressing rooms in this country. Club competitions, national competitions, international competitions. And you got into the dressing room, you listen to the coach doing grammar. Boys, I don't like the way you are playing. That game was too bad. If you play like that in the second half, we will lose this match. What has he said as a coach? What do you say when you are, you know, your sort of half-time summaries with your players? What do you say instead of what you just mentioned? You remember, after the World Cup in Korea, Japan, People who are shouting that Tony Bende was too quiet, he will sit down like that, he will not stand up, jump up and down. Why do I have to? And during that World Cup competition, the World Press interviewed me on this same topic and I told them why I was not doing it. And many coaches who were doing it before changed their tactics. So now, now, you know, modern football, when you see the likes of Maureen and the rest of them standing in front of. You when, know, I was analyzing, you when I was analyzing for FIFA, I will write in my report that this coach had not done his job at the right time. The match time is not the coaching time. It's not the coaching time. It's like a teacher handling a class and the, the pupils are now starting for their work. Will the teacher go to the boys to tell them what to do or what to write? And so, so he couldn't address them if they were going to do the wrong You must have things. done everything before the examination comes. And let me give you an example. In 1997, we were in Malaysia for the Junior World Cup. I was on FIFA team, analyzing. Then the then first vice president of FIFA organized a dinner for FIFA staff. That's Jack Warner. I didn't know it was organized because of me. So as we were having the dinner, then he said, uh, Chief, Chief, uh, if Nigerians have people like you, why are they going to Europe looking for coaches? Well, I said in Nigeria we have our problems. In about 15 minutes, he said, Chief, tell me why you will not come to Trinidad and Tobago to help us. At the head of the table was the then chairman of CAF Technical Committee. He's a Tunisia, Slim Alulu. He responded quickly. He said, no, we cannot allow Chief to leave Africa. But less than two hours after that dinner, I got a letter of appointment from Trinidad and Tobago. So, so that's your first international assignment, so first to speak. Assignment. How would you compare your preparation with the 1994 uh, team to the World Cup? I mean, you took Nigeria to the 2002 World Cup. Yes. And um, a foreigner it was that took Nigeria to the 1994 World Cup. Yes. How would you compare the preparations, yours and his? Well, people know me for uh, my grassroots approach. In 1984, when I took the team, I was the first Nigerian coach to take the team to African Cup of Nations too. I built my, my team around the local boys. I didn't have one single foreign base player. Not one. So I believe in building, maybe because I was a teacher. <laughs> but so, why would the likes of uh, JJ or Kocha and the rest of you accuse you of uh, selecting players 
on Central. That was why. Because I wouldn't allow any player, no matter how highly rated he is, to take me to ransom. I will be ready to, you know, tell you off. I accommodate all my players. I, you know, joke with them, play with them. But to say because you are a star player, you want to... No, 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 you can't have it with me. <laughs> Is it one? Yeah, it's one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you were a politician and won an election, what would be your first line of action to make Nigeria work again. Wow. No, I would like to hear that from you. Coincidentally, that is my line of interest. It is. Today Politics. In Nigeria, well, I, I was a politician. Did I, you vote in the last elections? No, I didn't. Now, hang on. You, the, the road leading to your house yes. is, is, is in a bad state. Do you, you know the council that, your what area? I'm talking about? Is it, is it the only road that is in bad state? <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, okay, go ahead and answer that, the question. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, go ahead, Chief, <laughs> and answer the question. Now, um, if I won an election in this country, the first problem we have to save is to make every Nigerian think like a Nigerian. Patriotism. Not like, not like a Yoruba man. Not like an Igbo man. Have you made an effort to speak another Nigerian language? Uh, because or is, it, or is it just too late? Now? I it's too late. I okay. have not lived in I mean outside uh, this area for a relatively long time. The fathers have gone from Ibadan. Uh, Ibadan is uh, Iloni, and Iloni is Yoruba. And you like your Amala, don't you? Uh, of course. <laughs> <yes. laughs> so first, to make every Nigerian think like a Nigerian. Yes. Not like a Nibu man. Okay. The area where you have most killings in this country today are the northwest. Mm. Samfara, Sokoto, Katsina. Is it the Yoruba that are there? Why don't we see it as a national problem and find solution to it? That's what we should do, exactly. Yeah, that's precisely. what we should do. I, I, I think um, we need to reorientate our politicians. Our politicians are too, uh, too stubborn in their quest to gain power. They are not realistic. Maybe not even, maybe naive in the sense okay. of the word. I didn't want to use that word. Well, you have See, now. They are so strong, they, they are stubborn to it, selfish, and they don't bother what happens. They just want to gain power. You have lived football all your life, yes. eat, drip. In fact, I read something about you saying there is no other thing that would occupy your mind more than football, not even a woman. <laughs> is that right? It is right. Okay. It is right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so but there are a few things people don't know about me. I was a theater artist. Really? With, with the University of Ife, now OAU. When you say theater act, artist, are you like I was an, an actor? actor? An, an actor. Were you good at it? Oh, very good. So you could have been an, an actor the, if you were not best, a football the coach. The best producer, the best theater producer, to my knowledge, that Nigeria has produced was uh, Olaru Timi, late Olaru, Olaru Timi. He declared me a natural actor. Really? Yes. How would you assess the present coach of the national football team? I mean, they're currently involved in the Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. They've won only two matches unfortunately, so far. Unfortunately, Do you see them lifting the cup? I, I said something a little while ago. That there's a difference between results and performance. But unfortunately, I have decided to mellow in my comments on the Nigerian football. Because of what you said earlier on, I'm a difficult man. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think, at, nine, at 81, I cannot start learning how to tell lies. Or how to call black white. But you look incredibly good at 81, to well, be honest. Was. Is that the only reason why you feel relaxed? Or is That's this, what I'm is this, is this like life after See, divorce? If you don't know, I'm a polygamist. Because I am not a deceiver. Oh, okay. You, uh, you have more than one wife. Yes. Why? Oh, 
One, I'm an African. Two, isn't it better for me to have two, three wives in my house than renting houses, apartments for women all over the place? Would that give me a rest of mind? So when you when, when one, when you kick one out, you, do you replace them? I have not replaced anybody. Are you no, planning at, at to do age, are you planning to at do my that? Age. No, what actually happened was question of stubbornness. If you can't go well along with me, what is the next thing? Should I make it compulsory for you? Then you can find your way out. And that is why, in spite of the fact that I'm a polygamist, I have not signed any dotted line with any woman in my life. Because I want you to be free. If you get fed up with me, you can wake me up at 12 midnight. Oh, Baba, I think I've had enough. We'll talk it over, if you insist. How many children do you have? I have six of them. From how many wives? Uh, three. <clears throat> You have done well. Thank you me. have done well. What are the five most important things you must take along with you? You can't do without them on a, on a regular basis. What will they be? Toiletry. Yeah. My soup and, and sponge and the, all the rest of it. Take it along. Then. A spiritual book, like the Bible. Uh, if I was vast enough in the Quran, I would take one. Why you not? Because of my background. Yeah, but you understand. I, I had an opportunity to have some training as a Quranic student. So because I had an uncle who was a... Uh, okay, so what else? You, you have the toiletries, the Bible, then what? Uh, then, of course, if I know I'm going to have enough time, my football kit, I'll take it along. Do you still jog? Yes. Can you lift a football up in the air? <laughs> sure. Really? Sure. At 81? Yes. You are unbelievable. <laughs> well, now, what else? Number four? Uh, well, casual dress. Okay. Some clothing. Uh, yes. Some clothing. Then what else, finally? Uh, hmm. Well, I will want to take along something for recreation. Yes, what would that be? Maybe an IU, a IU board. Okay. Uh -huh. You know what it is? It yes, it, yes, it yes, yes. So that if I have a partner who knows how to play with me. You won't find one there. So you play a game on your own. Can you do that? Oh, it is possible. Ah, okay. It's possible. Do, do, do you like music? I do. What I sort of music? You, I told you, I come from a family that plays the talking drum. Okay, and up, yeah. And up till now, I play it very well. So who is your favorite and, musician to date? I mean... Uh, well, uh, I will pick Ebenezer Obey because of the lyrics. What does the, the lesson, music do the to you? you have to learn from what? It calms your nerves. Yes, it calms your nerves. And you learn. Okay, you learn a lot yes, of lessons. Yes. You want to remind me one of the lessons you've learned from his music? Uh, a lot of them, a lot of them. But um, accepting your life as it is. Mm -hmm. Not uh, being over anxious about things. That everything comes by God. So. You don't need to overlabor yourself. What you have to do is to make sure you make your effort. Then whatever comes out of it, you take it as part of your life. Just as you have. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. It's thank nice you. talking to you, thank Chief you. Onig Binde. Thank you. And um, you are welcome. You are really welcome. Are you going to hazard a guess about Nigeria's position in this cup of nations? Uh, I'm out of that. <laughs> <laughs> because. When you talk, they say you are difficult again. I want to, you know, mellow down on Nigerian football matters. Okay. Yeah. Thank you once I again. I know that it could be much, much better than what it is now. Yes. Yeah. But we have some people in charge who are doing it the way they know to do it. So I can only wish them the best of luck. And I wish you also the best of luck Thank and you. many more years Thank ahead you. of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been Chief Adeboye. Unique Binde, 
a former national coach of Nigeria, uh, football, that is, I am Manny. Let's meet again. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you.